Hello and welcome to Chapter 9 of The Coin, the final chapter. Hi, my name is Kevin Masterson and I'll be performing your reading today. Remember, you can buy a book in the description. Uh, reading along with us is a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, The Coin, Chapter 9. Chapter 9. Okay, sir, I will pray my prayers also for the same thing. Okay, good. When will you be back to the Vatican? I'm going to stay here for three more days, just to monitor things to make sure everything is all right. Okay, good. Have a blessed and safe trip back. When you get here, come and meet with me so that we can go over things. Okay, sir. Will do. I will talk to you later. Okay, good. See and talk to you then. Okay, bye, sir. Okay, bye. They hung up on the phone with goodbyes to one another. Apostle Job went back into the living room where everybody was. When he got off the phone, talking to the Pope. Jake's wife, Jessie, was out of the kitchen socializing while the food was still cooking. He entered Apostle Job. The living room saying, I see everybody's here. Hello, everybody. In unison, they all said, hello back. I talked to Pope Timothy. Everything's okay. I'll be heading back to the Vatican in three days. Okay, sounds good. How is the Pope? He's well. Apostle Job, tell the Pope I said hello and wish him well when you get back. Will do. Ah, Jake and Jesse, would you like to send a message to Pope Timothy? Yes, I would. I would also. Tell him I love him and thank him for his support and blessings through our times of troubles. Tell him I love him also and to keep up in his prayers and God bless him for giving us his support through our times of troubles. Okay, we'll do. It was a quiet moment. Everybody calmed down without conversation and just started to check the news out that was on the television at the time. Jessie said that she was going to check on the food. Everybody said okay. Sounds good. I know that we all are ready to eat. Everybody agreed. Jesse got up and went into the kitchen to check on the food. At that time, a special bulletin came on TV on the news. They were watching that our president of the United States of America will be having a special news conference at 8 p.m. tonight. They all agreed no matter what they were doing at that time, they were going to watch and see what he had to say. At that time, Jesse came out of the kitchen and announced that dinner is served. Everybody had their individual comments saying, oh yeah, yes, all right. They proceeded to go to the dining area and they all took a seat at the dining area table. Jesse had already set the table with plates, etc., before she went into the kitchen to start cooking. They ate, afterwards relaxed and watched a little television before Father William and Apostle Job decided to leave and head on back to where they were residing. All was giving well wishes, blessings, and goodbyes. Afterwards, Father William and Apostle Job left. Father William dropped the Apostle off at his hotel room. Apostle Job went to his hotel room, read a few scriptures out of his Bible, and then retired and went to bed for the night. Father William went back to the seminary, consulted with supervisors about what happened, and then he retired, went to sleep for the night. That night, they were all so tired they forgot all about the president's speech they were supposed to watch. The next morning, Apostle Job called the Vatican and informed them that he would be leaving for Vatican City today. He said, Apostle Job, that he's leaving early because he feels that everything is fine. His flight leaves this afternoon at 3 p.m. and he will call them to come and pick him up when he arrives at the airport. Father William returned to work in the parish at the church as priest. And Jake and Jesse went back to their profession. They, Jake and Jesse, woke up next morning, had breakfast, and they got themselves together to go to work. When they got there at work, everything seemed normal as usual. But little did they know that while they were having the exorcism performed on him, the Spirit of the Lord, with his divine powers eradicated all the demons who were possessing Jake and Jesse and everyone who was close to them, God casted all the demons straight down into the depths of hell at the command of our Father, the Lord God. Business went on as usual, but stealing, killing, 
and trying to create dominion over certain things that they are interested in for evil purposes ceased. They are all unaware, except Jake and Jesse, that they are all working their business for the Lord and themselves, and there is no hanky-panky or evil doings, period. As time went on, Jake and Jesse worked until Jesse had to take a maternity leave. She gave birth to a son. They named him Jakiva. The name Jakiva means the chosen one. Life was good for the Wilsons. They would spend a lot of time at the in-laws and with family and friends. Jake and Jesse always kept in touch with Father William and Apostle Job, periodically to always check to see how each other is doing. The parents of Jesse were never told about the exorcism. The parents of Jesse was affected by the exorcism. The Holy Spirit of the Lord God entered into them and changed their way of thinking and living. And now they were working for the Lord God through his son, Jesus Christ. The parents' organization prospered in good tidings, focusing on creating jobs and serving the people in the name of the Lord. They didn't have a clue that their lives, Jesse's parents, had been transformed into living with the will of God in them to carry out his work, the Lord God. As time went by, the Vatican spokesperson and the Pope himself to everyone involved to always pray the prayer that the Pope instructed them. How to pray to keep the devil at bay and into the depths of hell for the next thousand years. Time went on. Everybody involved in the exorcism was living a comfortable and peaceful life. Jake and Jesse were still working at their jobs. Jesse was on maternity leave for a year. When she started back working, she would leave about an hour earlier from her job before Jake. This was their job hours. In order for her to pick up the baby from her mother's house, her mother volunteered to babysit her grandson. So she and the baby can be at home before Jake knocks off from work. He arrived, opened the door and said, Honey, I'm home. Where are you? She heard him and responded, I'm in the kitchen. He walked into the kitchen where she was and said, Honey, how is the baby? He's good. He's sleeping in the bassinet in the bedroom. Okay, good, honey. I got promoted at the job to CEO of the company, and the pay is both of ours combined and a lot more. You don't have to work anymore. Oh, great. That means that I can stay home and raise Jakiva. Exactly. Isn't that a great blessing? Praise the Lord. Yes, it is. Praise the Lord. They were so happy about the good news, they could hardly compose themselves to get relaxed. But they calmed down and the blessing was entering into their lives from that day forward and forever. The next morning, Jake went back to his workplace with a new job title, CEO of the company. When he got there, he was greeted very warmly and respectful. His personal secretary, Mrs. Jameson, was there waiting to escort him after he was greeted to his new position. His secretary introduced herself to him and informed him of some basic duties and to show him his new office. They arrived at his new office himself and Mrs. Jameson. Well, here we are! Mrs. Jameson gave him the master key to his office door and every door in the building. There was his name and title on the door. Mr. Jake Wilson, CEO. Jake accepted the key and took a look at the door. Wow, this is nice. I know I am going to love this. That's good. I know you will too, Mr. Wilson. Well, let's go in. He opened the door and they walked in the office. Mrs. Jameson knew the setup in the office, but everything was new to Jake. Wow, this is nice. There was a computer, huge fish tank with exotic fish, big screen TV in the lounge, and a mini kitchen. To tell you the truth, it had just about everything and even a very spacious patio. I knew you would love it. Yes, I really do. I am ecstatic. Thank God through his son, Jesus Christ, for everything. Amen, sir. I am happy that you have found everything is in order. I have to get back to work. If you need me for anything, just call me on the intercom system on the desk. 
It's linked directly to me. Okay, great. Thanks for everything. Have a good day. You are welcome. We'll do and talk to you later. You have a good day too, sir. Okay, thanks. I will. Mrs. Jameson walked to the door and asked Jake if he wanted the door closed. He said yes, and she closed the door. Jake kicked back in his chair at his desk, thinking to himself, to check all departments that they have in the firm and to call and talk on the intercom system to his secretary to let everybody know that he wants to have a meeting to introduce himself to everyone and to speak to them to advise them what kind of program of operation he has in mind to maintain the company to keep running smoothly, successful, and very profitable. Plus, have feedback from employees about suggestions from them that they can input some ideas to keep the company successful and profitable. That we can decide whether or not if it's conducive for the company's growth or not. So he did, call secretary, and they set up a meeting for the following Friday at the end of the work week. After Jake talked to the secretary and set up the meetings with employees who retired for the day and proceeded to go home to his family. He went to his car in the parking garage in his personal parking place for the CEO of the company got into his leased company Ferrari and drove home, taking the same route he was taking when he was just a worker. And now he's CEO of the company. He's driving the same route to and from home. When he arrived home, he parked his car in the car space in front of the garage. By the way, Jesse knew about the Ferrari. She loved it. Jesse, his wife, heard him pull up and decided that when he opened the front door to come in, she is going to be behind the door to surprise him, just to see what kind of reaction she can get out of him. Just for play. He opened the door and called for his wife. Jesse, where are you? Before he can say anything else, Jesse came from behind the door and said, boo, real loud. Whoa, in a very shocked and surprised voice. They looked at one another and started laughing aloud with very wholesome, spirited laugh and embraced one another with a passionate hug and kiss. That was funny. It kind of scared me a little. I was relieved that it was you. Ha ha ha! You had a very peculiar look on your face. Ha ha ha! Okay, don't rub it in the ground. Okay, how was your day, honey? Jesse is still giggling a little. <laughs> it was great. The new office is immaculate and I have a real nice and respectful secretary and the both of us set up a meeting so that I can meet and speak with all of the staff. Oh, good, that's great. He locked the door and they proceeded to walk to the kitchen. Where is Jakiva? He's in the bedroom, sleep. I'll be back. I'm going to peek in on him. Okay. Jake went to his son's room, peeked in on him, and indeed, he was asleep. He just stood and looked at his son for a while, feeling very blessed, and in his mind, thanking God through his son Jesus for blessing them with such a healthy and beautiful baby. When he was done admiring his son, he proceeded to go back to the kitchen where his wife was preparing dinner. Baby! You know we are really blessed. Yes, you are absolutely right. You know, when we are really able, we should start giving back to people and to different charities we care about. I agree, I'm on board. When we get a chance, we're going to make a list of who and what charities we're going to help. Okay, sounds good to me. Jake had in mind before the conversation started what charities he wanted to help and about what they are going to do. What's for dinner? Spaghetti and meatballs, potato salad, and spinach with dinner rolls. Whoa, that sounds real good, honey. I know it's gonna taste just as good. Oh, thank you, baby. You're welcome. What time will it be ready? In about another 15 minutes. Okay, good. Sometime before the week is over, we're gonna figure out who we're going to help. I have some ideas. Okay, sounds good. Jake went into the living room and sat in his reclining chair, turned on the TV and started to read the daily newspaper. Before long, Jesse called Jake to let him know that dinner is ready. 
So they ate! After eating, Jake went back in the living room and watched TV. A little while later, Jesse came in after she finished cleaning up the kitchen. They watched TV together for a while and later that night retired and went to bed. That whole week, Jake and Jesse's routine was just about the same. For Jake, it was going to work, taking the same route to work and back home. Same business at work as usual and same routine he does when he gets home. Playing with his son if he's not asleep, talk to wife, eat dinner, watch TV and then retire for bed. Jesse, same routine! Fix breakfast for Jake before he go to work and for son if he's up and not still asleep. Doing regular housewife duties on occasion, go out to stores for different things for the house. Occasionally going out to different places, her and her son, just to get out of the house to enjoy the outdoors. At the end of the week, which was Friday, Jake, before leaving home, Jesse would walk him to the door if his son is awake. She would be holding him, her son. Jake would have to give both a kiss and Jesse would say to him to have a good day, honey. And Jake would say, okay, thanks, sweetheart. And you do too. And sometimes the baby would say something in baby talk, like, Yuri, Yuri, Billy, to his daddy. He would kiss his son and say, I love you. And kiss his wife and say, I love you. And say to his wife to have a good day. Then he would walk out the door to his car and his wife and son would be standing in the door until he drives off. When he drives off, he blows the horn once and waves. And his wife would wave back and hold up their son's hands so he can gesture a wave back too. Now he's on his way to work for a staff meeting. He made it to the office and right away, business as usual. That Friday, about one hour before punch out time for employees, he had all his employees meet in the conference room where he had their general meetings for all staff. They all assembled in the conference room, mingling amongst one another, chit-chatting, enjoying refreshments, until the boss made his grand appearance. After maybe a half an hour lapsed, Jake walked into the conference room at 3.30 p.m. on that Friday. As a matter of fact, it was also payday for everybody. Jake walked up to the podium and addressed the crowd. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. Wilson. How is everybody? They all said different things like, okay, good, great, etc. But most of all, they were all doing great. I'm your new boss. I'm very happy to be on board to run our company. Some of the ones who were working before the change and are still here after the new leadership, well, they know me because I was one of them. For the new employees and the old, if there's any concerns about anything, my doors are always open. Jake proceeded to talk to the staff about the program he has in mind to keep the corporation being very successful, prosperous, and helpful for everybody concerned. When he was done with the speech at the meeting, the staff accepted him very favorably to lead their corporation into the future. After meeting, everybody mingled talking to one another and expressing their pleasures to Mr. Wilson for having him as their boss. After everything was over, everyone dispersed in an orderly fashion, doing different things such as taking doggy bags of food left over, leaving together as carpool, and different other scenarios people do after a staff meeting. When everything was said and done, Jake left and went home the usual way, as always. He arrived home doing the same routine as usual, went to open his door to his house, which his wife was there waiting for him behind the door. He called out her name as usual, and she would come out from behind the door on every occasion she does that. She would say a different weird sounding word or sound to startle or try to scare him, only out of fun. This day, their son was up sitting in his high chair. Jake started talking to him, asking him how he's doing. I love you, come here. Then he picks him up out of his high chair and was holding him, talking, kissing, and walking around with him, just having fun. While Jesse gets dinner prepared for them, they're at the dinner table, father, mother, and son. Jake blessed the food. They started eating. Jake told Jesse what went on at the meeting this afternoon. His son was just eating and looking and listening at his parents' conversation. The relationship between the three, father, mother, son, is very good and very blessed. As for any type of demonic activities in their lives, 
it was seized completely after the exorcism, because God has rebuked the devil and his demons and cast them down in the depths of hell for a thousand years, before he, God, will let him out to roam around back here on earth. As for Jake and Jesse, and their son, and everybody in their family and friends, fellow co-workers, and any and everybody associated with them, was living a very blessed, successful, and prosperous life. Praise the Lord, our God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. This book is dedicated to my best friend, Sandra Loretta Dixon. My love always, Nathaniel. Thank you for reading along, uh, watching along. Uh, thank you for being a part of this. Uh, please uh, like, subscribe, share, comment. Let's spread the word about the coin because I think we have a movie in our future. So let's get it done. All right, thank you guys, bye.